independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Inflation. 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 Don't know what else to say. Consumer price index surged 6.2% in October. Worse than expected. Translation. Inflation's ugly. We haven't seen stuff like this since 1990. 1990. What are people worried about? Again, let's go over this. I have to explain it to you. You get it. Some people that are new to the program may not get it. The everyday person. The everyday person. Cost of living. COL. Getting more expensive. Gas prices surging. Home heating going to get ugly. It's going to get hot in here. Food, expensive. You add it all up. Janet Yellen's like, it'll be fine. Sometime next year, I expect everything to be okay. That's what she's saying. People don't live for next year. They live for today. Now, is there only so much people can do? Absolutely. What people want is action, though. At some point, action. At some point, you make a move. At some point, you do something that looks like you're dealing with a problem by trying to find a solution. Remember how we were told, don't worry about inflation. Don't worry about it, guys. It's going to be gone a couple days. And it was like, well, it may last through the summer. Maybe, you know, fourth quarter, see it start to tail off. Janet Yellen's like, I expect uh, price increases to uh, to level off, and we'll go back to incl- uh, inflation closer to 2%. It shouldn't last much beyond next year. Excuse me? People don't want to hear that. If we have to act, we will. So we can prevent a return to the 70s-style prices. If we have to act, we will. Leaders act. Things are ugly. For the average person, they're looking around. There was a new poll out yesterday about what people are worried about heading into next year's midterms. And a lot of it was based on what we just saw take place last week in, you know, parts across the country throughout the Northeast. You know, when you when you looked at what was happening with uh Glenn Youngkin and McAuliffe and and the surprise win there and even how close it was in in New Jersey and stuff. And 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 what was the number one thing though? The thing we always harp on, the thing that every single person listening to the show participates in, the economy, stupid. The economy. The economy. That's it. That's what people Think about it. everything else, man. When you got money in the bank and you're not worried, even if you are, you have troubles. Those troubles feel lessened, right? It's like sports. I always bring sports back as a great analogy because sports to many people is life, right? You have ebbs, you have flows, you have good days, you have bad days, you have things you have to work over and try to you know become better at. All of those things. Winning cures a lot of the ills. Doesn't mean they're not there, but at the end of the day. You're still winning. People don't feel like they're winning right now. People don't. They're looking around. And they're going, what are we doing? Number one thing people are worried about aren't schools. Aren't schools. Right? It's not the CRT. That was a big deal there because, well, people are pissed. Parents were pissed. Spent the last 18 months educating their kids. They were a little frustrated. Understandable. Understandable. Totally understandable. But wasn't number one. Mm -mm. Wasn't China and the rise of China. Wasn't terrorism. Wasn't race relations. 
it was inflation in the economy. That's it. Coronavirus isn't number one right now. Inflation in the economy is. If you're the president, you've been awfully quiet. I've heard you talk about climate change. I've heard you talk a lot about coronavirus. But I'm still waiting to really address this. I'm still waiting for you to really come out and say this. If I'm him and I'm his people, I'm like, here is what you need to do. You need to have an Oval Office full, every camera, every single network on you talking about what you're going to do because people want to know that you're in it with them. Mm -mm -mm. You're not getting that. You're not getting that. You're not. You can set it up so you don't have to take questions that might make you feel uncomfortable. You can set it up so you don't have to worry about being caught off guard. You can set it up so you, being the President of the United States, can control the narrative but make people understand that you're in it with them. And I don't feel that. I don't. I don't think anybody else does. And when people talk about inflation, you haven't been totally honest. Well, it's only 3%. When's the last time you went somewhere and it was just 3%? You spent 100 bucks on groceries, it was 103 bucks. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Start thinking outside the box. Start saying, we have all this corona money here that we didn't use up. Maybe we tell the states and maybe we say, hey, look, we're going to eat some of this tax money that we would get from gas. And we're going to hold this off until February 1st. So no more gas tax. Something that makes people feel like you're in it with them. I don't think they're feeling that. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Hope you are doing well. Like I said. People want to know you're in it with them. They don't feel like that. And they're looking around and thinking to themselves, what's it going to be like when you see prices shoot up and you get that first deep winter three-week freeze and you get that bill? What's that going to look like? They expect the nearly half of U.S. households using natural gas will spend 29% more on their fuel bills this year than last winter, 48% more if it's a particularly cold winter. Heating oil is expected to jump 39% from last year. Propane is expected to rise 46%, and electricity is expected to increase 6%. 29, 39, 6. 29, 39, 6. Even if, even if, man, even if it's only 150 extra dollars a week that you're spending now compared to last year, when you do that over a long period of time and you're not below the poverty, you're living just above it in that middle class area, 50, 60 grand a year, maybe 70 between the two of you. And prices are rising. That adds up over time. Death by a thousand cuts. The difference is, is it a paper cut? Because it feels like now it's going to be a knife. It might be a sword sooner rather than later. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Hope you are doing well. A lot of stuff to get to. It's Woke Wednesday. Should we have a little woke fun? Because it is Wednesday, we love it to talk a little wokeness. Let's have fun. We like to give you this stuff every single week where we give you some wokeness. I know some of the people now are like, it's not woke. Old people say woke. No, you guys just don't like the fact that people say it now because it makes you feel bad. But this is woke. We like woke. Asexual and pansexual are two ways to describe your sexual orientation. 
But what's the difference between them? Bisexual means being attracted to more than one gender, including non-binary people. And although the prefix bi does mean two, you can be attracted to more than two genders and still label yourself as bisexual. Whereas being pansexual means you're attracted to people of any and all genders. It can mean you're attracted to people as individuals, regardless of gender identity. The key difference is that bisexuality is being attracted to multiple genders, whereas pansexuality is being attracted to all genders. All 14 million of them. I go back to this. This wokeness is taking over a lot of stuff. Right? Read an article today that, get ready for this. Meetings eat up. Are you ready for this? (laughs) They eat up so much time a week. Pre-pandemic, it was 14.2 hours a week. Now, the average professional spends 21.5 hours a week in meetings. And we're not just talking about meetings where it's one-on-one or you're sitting down with a few people and you're going over stuff. This includes things like where you have to spend two hours going over crazy stuff in the workforce so your company can check all the boxes so nobody gets sued over something. That's part of it. That's not productive, by the way. That's not. That's not productive. If you're spending 21.5 hours a week focusing on something other than your job, well, it's part of your job. It's really not. You know that. How many of you have been just regular meetings? I won't work at a place that has a lot of meetings. I don't do it. I got other things going on. Meetings should be quick. Let's get done and go. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Raycon, best earbuds around. Love my Raycons. Christmas time, right? You know, we're just talking about what all of the stuff that's going on with with the the supply chains and inflation and all these kind of things. You have nothing to worry with Raycons. Raycons are ready for your holiday pleasure. Ray J's put together the best around. So let's start your gift shopping a little bit early today. Say big on the gift they're going to use all the time. That's Raycon wireless earbuds, seamless Bluetooth pairing, noise isolating fit. You can start listening right away. Listen for hours as well. Plus, they've got the new, with the new everyday earbuds, you get one, two, three profiles. One, two, three. The right amount of bass is what you're looking for. They've got bass mode, balance mode, pure mode. You can listen to podcasting in pure balance. You can listen to podcasting, rock, heavy metal. You get to that bass mode, boom, hip-hop, EDM, reggae, etc. 32-hour battery life, eight hours of playtime, built-in mic, click like that. Take phone calls. They're going to hear you right now for my listeners of the Chad Benson Show. Save big. They already start under 70 bucks. How about 20% off? Go to buyraycon.com slash Chad. Unlock your exclusive deal right now. Up to 20% off your Raycon order. 45-day free shipping. Buyraycon.com slash Chad. Buyraycon.com slash Chad. Chad Benson Show. Check out our Chad Benson Show Facebook page where you can hang out or hang your grievances out to dry. This is Chad Benson. That is us, kids. That is us. We're just talking about meetings. I was reading some of this stuff. I mean, I I, I don't like meetings I get. The problem is there's so many, pl- and I've worked places where there's so many meetings and everybody puts stuff out there, but very few people ever follow through on that. And I'm sure many of you have worked at places like that where you're like, oh, we have a lot of meetings. And then when everybody says, oh, let's do this, this, and this. And by like the fourth day, no, like the first day people try to get gung ho on it. The second day, somebody misses. The third day, very few people are doing the things they're supposed to. And by the fourth day, you know, some of you, either you or this person, where you're like, I'm the only one doing any of the stuff we just talked about. You, you, you've got to put it into play. And I couldn't even, like, spending 21 hours a week in meetings is insane. And one-on-ones. We got a one-on-one today. Let's sit down and go, what are you working on, Jim? Hey, hey, Rod, what's going on? Sally, what you working on? How can I help you? (laughs) Jeez, Chad, you're not a meeting guy. I get it. 
I always thought the people that like the lead meetings are the people that don't want to do anything. <laughs> That's their, their, what's your job? I lead meetings. For what? Just whatever. I'll get up and talk about anything as long as I don't have to do it. You were the kid in class that would start asking the teacher crazy random questions because you didn't want to do whatever it is you were supposed to do. And the teacher would answer. And once you knew you got that teacher to answer, you would continue to answer questions till the clock ran out. Oh, maybe. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. The Reconciliation Bill. We've got a date. A date. Madam Speaker, uh, how confident are you or what is the likelihood that the House will pass the Reconciliation Bill the week of November 15th? Well, thank you very much for your question. Yes, we intend, uh, that is our plan, to pass the bill the week of November 15th, as was indicated at the time of passing the uh, infrastructure bill. And we're very proud of that. Yeah, so he's supposed to sign the infrastructure bill on the 15th when everybody, I guess, is back in, in, in full and then they're going to try to get the reconciliation bill, bill done. I don't know if they're going to do that, to be honest with you. I, I, I don't know where that stands. It's a lot of money when you're talking about all the stuff that's going on right now with inflation. The thought of printing more money and handing more money out uh, is, again, we live in it right here, right this moment. I mean, I can plan for the future, set aside money, do all of those kind of things. But to get to the future, you have to live and survive in the moment. And if you don't do that, well, then the future really doesn't matter. <laughs> and that's the way people think. At the end of the day, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're not thinking about, you know, 10 years from now. You're thinking about how do I get from, you know, uh, this is my schedule for today. You know, take the kids to school. I got a meeting and then I got to go, you know, uh, you know, I have to do this job here. And then I've got, you know, another meeting and, and a bid. And then I've got to pick the kids up from school. And then, you know, the husband or wife's got, we had soccer practice. And one of them's got banned and you're trying to survive. We've got to get groceries. And oh my God, just, that's what people are thinking about. And the thought of going out and printing more money, doing those kind of things right now. Hmm. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if they can get it passed, because I still think there are a couple holdouts, and they don't seem to be moving at all, at all, when it comes to this reconciliation bill. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program, Chad Benson Show. Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Woke Wednesday. I want to wake you guys up with this. Inflation going through the roof. It is not good, kids. It's the worst inflation, the worst jump we've seen in, uh, geez, heading almost on three decades. It is not a good look. And if you're the White House, it's eerily, eerily, eerily silent. People are asking questions, not just about uh, the inflation and, and things, but here's a perfect example of where people, to me, I feel are missing at this point in time the ball. Not saying these things aren't important and we don't discuss them. But maybe now's not the time to hyper focus on them. Maybe the time is to what can we do for my constituents, my fellow Americans, my people to ease some of the stress that's going on at this moment in time. You're focusing on you know, booster shots and, okay, well, you know, we know who's getting the shot and who's not. And by the way, there's not a rush to get shot for kids and there's not a rush to get shots for the booster side of it. They're not. I think a lot of Americans are, are I don't want to say skeptical, but I think they're a little frustrated and felt like they were, you know, told some pokey pies. On the other side of things, you're spending all day in these January 6th hearings. Okay. You're still spending all day trying to, you know, the, some of the Republicans are spending all day trying to undo an election, and the other ones are trying to, you know, 
spend all day fighting January 6th. How about those things you pick up after we sort some of this other stuff out? People want to know you're involved. I go back to it because it's so real. When I was a broker, when I was a trader, when you can't get a hold of somebody and things are going south, because it's easy to get a hold of them when things are going good, right? They're picking up that phone. But when things are going south, people want to know you're involved. And that's it. People do. People want to know you're involved. Some people now, they didn't like to pick up the phone. We have it here. We had a person that worked for us who was terrified to tell people that they didn't win a prize at a damn radio station. Uh, I feel bad about that. No, don't. People want to know you're involved. That's it. I mean, it's, 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 and they don't feel like, because they feel like you're focusing on things that at this moment really doesn't. January 6th and the election, well, the integrity of these settled out. January 6th has nothing to do with people's lives at this moment in time. The overblown insanity of some of this stuff. Well, that was the most egregious thing in the history. It was a bunch of idiots, some of which who thought they were going to start a coup or whatever the hell they thought they were going to do because they were reading crap online. I have news for you. 95% of those people weren't bad people. They went there. They loved the president at the time. It went south. It didn't work for them. They're not trying to overthrow it. Four of the five percent that's left were well too into it, thought they were above everything, but I don't think they had a dream of starting a coup. And there was one percent of idiots who truly believed that they were going to do something. So if you break that down, that's very few people. People want to know, what are you doing now to help? People want to know, how are you doing things? to try to ease the pain what are you doing even if there's not a lot you can do the fact that you're trying to do something it's called effort that's it that's it but no we don't get that we don't get that because we have too many people fighting over things that they don't need to be fighting over case in point dip Schiff. we know him as adam Schiff. was on the view because he's got a book to sell pretty much about the steel dossier as we all know was a bunch of crap but Morgan uh, Ortegas, who is, she was a financial analyst and, and an advisor to the Trump administration, and I think she was a spokesperson for the Secretary of State at one time. Uh, she is the new, you know, because they're rotating people through now that uh, Meghan McCain's gone. So he's here talking about his stuff, right? The Steele dossier, the book. You got a book to sell. There's salaciousness in there. But he's still just, he's just the worst. He really is. You've been really prolific over the past few years being the head of the Intel Committee, and you defended, promoted, you even read into the congressional record the Steele dossier. Um, and we know last week the main source of the dossier was indicted by the FBI for lying about most of the key claims in that dossier. Do you have any reflections on your role in promoting this to the American people? Whoever lied to the FBI or lied to Christopher Steele should be prosecuted. We couldn't have known, for example, people were lying to Christopher Steele. Why? Isn't that your guy's job? Isn't that the FBI's job? Why, why couldn't you have known? I'm just curious. Why couldn't you have known? Though We could have known they were lying. Yes, you do. That's their gig. You guys didn't even think about vetting this? Well, we did vet it, and we decided it was crap, but still people continue to go on with it. Let's not forget what we learned in that investigation. We learned that the Trump campaign chairman, Paul Manafort, was giving internal polling data, campaign polling data, to Russian intelligence while Russian intelligence was helping the Trump and campaign. And to be clear, he was fired halfway through the campaign. He may have been fired, but the, the effort to get Russian help continued, and even beyond the effort to get Russian help, but you the president also sought to get... But you may have spread Russian disinformation yourself for years by promoting this. I think that's what Republicans and what people who entrusted you as the Intel Committee chair are so confused about your culpability in all of this. Yeah, and he started to, you know, sweat because he's got those beady eyes and things started to get a little uncomfortable uh you know for him and and again it's funny you know oh these people over here are bad but how could we know these people you're you're in charge of the intel committee isn't that your job to know intelligence i know it's weird well i, I completely disagree with your premise uh, it's one thing to say allegations should be investigated and they were 
Exactly. It's another to say that we should have foreseen in advance that some people were lying to Christopher Steele, which is mm -hmm. impossible, of course, to do. But let's not use that as a smokescreen to somehow shield Donald Trump's culpability for inviting Russia to help him in the election, which they did, uh, into inciting an insurrection, uh, insurrection, which he did. I'm sure he did cite one of those like things, which he wait, what? What did you say there, sir? Yeah. Yeah. Again. Credibility. It matters. He didn't have any. But you're out there selling a book and you're still talking about this stuff. People want to know, what are you doing? How are you talking to the president? Hey, Mr. President, what are some of the things that we can do? we got people here. You know, you're from California, Adam. You one time were my congressperson. Awful, right? But what are you doing? People are looking at 5 $6 gas in some areas. People are struggling to, to make ends meet, right? Because you've shut everything down in L.A. to a point where it's insane. What are you doing at this point in time to try to get some relief for people? You're not. You're out there still continuing to push stuff that at this point in time, 99% of the people don't care about. But they should care about this stuff. Most people don't. Some people do because they sit around all day watching MSNBC and Fox. They sit around all day watching Newsmax and, and One American News and CNN. They sit around all day reading weird things on the interwebs. But most of us are doing stuff. Most of us are out working. Most of us are out busting our ass. And they're like, yeah, you know what? Steel dossier was crap. We already knew that. I don't really care. Nobody watches MSNBC or CNN anyways. Nobody watches Fox. Oh, yes, they do. No, no. Not even comparatively close to what you find in other places. People have moved on from this stuff. Some people can't. Again, you're, 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 you know, the Republicans out here in Arizona are continuing to try to fight the, the election, the results. They're continuing to do it over and over again. Well, we've got proof. Here comes the arrest. There's no arrest being made. Yeah, huh? The, the AG's going to... No, he's not. Trust us. We talked to the AG. We know who he is. He's not doing anything. He's not. He's doing squat. What are you doing for today? That's what people want to know. Nothing. Nothing. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Love hearing from every single one of you. Aaron Rodgers thing is still going on. I still find that. He kind of pretended to apology. His apology sadness because everybody fires back at him, right? You know? And there, so he, he went back on with Pat McAfee. Uh, and it, it, it's, it, I just, I sit there and laugh because he just doesn't care. I mean, people want him to care. I mean, they're going to get fined. Doesn't he care about it? No, he doesn't. But he hurt his teammates. No, he didn't. He missed a game. They lost. Everything you needed, look, everything you needed to know about how much and how important Aaron Rodgers is to a football team is right there in the fact that his team just stunk it up against the Chiefs team that has a crappy defense. That's it. He hurt his team. Yeah, well, when they're 14-3 and three at the end of the year and they're going to the NFC Championship game, people aren't going to say, wow, I can't believe they did that. Wow, he hurt his team. You know, I made some comments that, that people might have uh, felt were misleading. and Because uh, they were. You know, to anybody who felt misled by those comments, I take full responsibility for those comments. <laughs> if you were hurt by those, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm an athlete. I'm not an activist. So I'm going to get back to doing what I do best. And that's, and that's playing ball. Like I shared my opinion. It wasn't one that was, that, that was come to, uh, frivolously. It involved a lot of study and what I felt like was in my best interest for my body, but further comments, you know, I'm going to keep between myself and my doctors. And, you know, I don't have any further comments about, uh, about any of those things after this interview and Joe Rogan. And Joe Rogan. That's it. And Joe Rogan. Remember that. And Joe Rogan. Because you guys are pals now. I consulted with now a good friend of mine, Joe Rogan, after he got COVID. And I've been doing a lot of the stuff that he recommended in his podcasts and, you know, on the phone to me. I've been taking monoclonal antibodies, ivermectin, zinc, vitamin C and DHEQ, and 
I feel pretty incredible. I saw somebody tweet it out. People hammer Joe Rogan because he's not a scientist, and those same people will turn and go, well, let's, you know, you're not a scientist. He's an idiot. Now let's talk to Big Bird and Elmo about how they feel about the vaccine. Uh, 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. Love hearing from you. Again, pro getting the shot, not pro mandate. Right? Right, Matt? They just said we can vaccinate kids. Do we need to trust? Do I want to trust in the science? Do I think that there's any kind of scam or conspiracy theory? Hell no, I don't. Right now, I'm not vaccinated. Mine, I'll tell you that. I'm not vaccinated. Mine, I want to get some more. I've been vaccinated. My wife has been vaccinated. We have a high-risk person in our household, my mother, who's 90, and she's immune compromised. I, I couldn't mandate having to vaccinate the younger kids. I still want to find out. I still want to find out more information. That's uh, Matthew McConaughey, who is getting, it feels like he's getting closer to announcing he's going to run. And he's going to run as a centrist. He doesn't want to be a part of a party. We're going to touch on that because that's the guy that that we're talking about where where we are, the exhausted majority. Some right, some left. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us. My pillow. Giza Dream Sheets, best sheets you'll ever own right now. 60-day money-back guarantee. Absolutely incredible. Machine washable. All the colors and sizes. King all the way down. Best sheet you're ever going to own. It's made with long staple cotton, grown in an amazing area right in the middle of the Mediterranean, between the Mediterranean Sea, the Nile, the Sahara Desert. And the long staple cotton is breathable. And so when you slide into them, it's like a sateen feel. Absolutely incredible. You will love these. The best sheet you're ever going to own. You buy a pair. Or you buy a set, you get a set for free. So it's a BOGO. Buy one, get one for free. You got deep discounts on all of the MyPillow products across everything, including the buy one, get one free, but the MyPillow, the My Slippers, the mattress topper, you name it, they have got it. Buy one, get one free in the Giza Dream Sheets, MyPillow.com, promo code Benson. MyPillow.com, promo code Benson. Get it now, MyPillow.com, promo code Benson. Chad Benson Show. States? Uh, no. Deep doo-doo? Yeah. The Chad Benson Show. Blatty's us. Inflation out of control. Talking about it. The White House is eerily silent. New York Times headline. Deflation spiked in October. See, Washington hopes the price gains will slow down. But we're asking nicely. You go and look at inflation, you go back. I mean, you know, it, on average, been right around 2%, dip a little here, up a little bit. It is spike, obviously, 2008-ish, huge drop after that, 2009, 2010, bounced up to right around 2%. It's kind of been holding steady, had a little bit of a bounce here and there. Even last year, while there was a bit of a bounce, the continuation of the 6.2% in October, 4.6% without food and energy. Are you kidding me? Let's go live to the White House and get their response. Yeah, that's what I thought. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. I do think that Matthew McConaughey is going to run for governor. I do. I think he's going to run for governor. I think he's looking around, and I think he thinks to himself, you know what, we're, we're and, and, and he's getting closer. And he talked, he's going to be a centrist. People say, well, uh, yeah, you're not choosing a side. People say that to me, choose a side. This is not a sport or war. (laughs) Choose a side. No. This This is how we got into this mess. I saw something yesterday where apparently Trump was pissed about the 13 Republicans who voted for the infrastructure bill. The infrastructure bill, by the way, which he wanted to push through, was an infrastructure bill as well. But he was pissed because it gave Biden a win. It gave America a win. (laughs) Biden doesn't get a present. Biden doesn't get a belt like he won a boxing match. You wouldn't have either. But their egos are so absolutely inflated. 
that when somebody else does good, they feel like it's a loss to them as if it's a contest and a tournament. Well, it is when it comes to voting. That's not what it's supposed to be about. What it's supposed to be about is what's good for America. Do you want to know who's the most selfish people you'll ever see? Look at our politicians. Very few of our politicians would sacrifice anything if it meant it may hurt their chances to get reelected. They wouldn't. Even if it means their constituents and their people actually improved. Well, you know, Chad, you know it's true. Come on. So it'll be interesting to see how he runs. I think he's going to do all of those, like those, those like Lincoln commercials where he's just kind of looking off to the side. I could totally be governor. Because governor's fun. And say some weird stuff like it's like a like a commercial for uh, like some sort of perfume or whatever. Governing is part of the governance of what I do. It's who I am. What I was made to do. It's what we're all about in our hearts and souls. <laughs> Buy a Lincoln. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show. It's your Twitter, tweet, text, love here from y'all. Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. I could be wrong, but I don't think I am. But I could be. I'll be wrong. Been wrong. But I tend to have my pulse on certain things. Inflation. Cost of stuff. Rising. Those of you guys not quite getting what inflation is. And the economy. Number one issue to a majority of you. Number one issue to voters right now. Number one. Economies always one or two. Always one or two. Right? Like, and and look, we're a reactionary society, right? Friday, concert security was not a big deal. By Saturday morning, they're like, we need to regulate this. Because we're a reactionary society. But the number one thing always when you ask people, it's like, it's almost the things like, I don't need to ask. Outside of the economy, what's your number one worry? Eh, it might be schools, right? It could be the coronavirus. It might be immigration. Uh, it could be, uh, you know, the loss of what people see as free speech. And, and, and it, it, But... It's always the economy, stupid. And I didn't make that up. Wasn't that James Carville that said that? It's the economy, stupid. Yeah. Always. Inflation bounced in October. Like, 6.2%. It was like 4.2% without food and energy prices. You think about that for a second. Janet Yellen and them are scratching their head, but we thought, uh, we, 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 we thought uh, it would be gone by now. It's not. It's not. It's not gone by now. It will be eventually. It'll flatten out. But the thought process of this is temporary, it's just a supply chain issue, This is temporary. Uh, You know, it's just a little bit of the energy prices rising. We weren't driving last year. We are now. We've got a much higher demand, and there's not as much. This is temporary. 
is the, the realization is it's, it's here now. And while it may be temporary, you're feeling it now. I don't live in tomorrow. I live in today. I don't live in retirement time. I live in now. So people are feeling it. Rents remaining high. Energy costs high. Food prices high. Energy right there, big. Because as energy goes, so go food prices. As energy goes, so goes gas prices were 49.6% higher in October than they were a year earlier. Fuel oil, which is industrial and domestic heating, up 60% comparatively. Food prices, which has been affected by supply chain issues, continue their ascent up almost 6% year over year. You feel that in your bank account? Let's talk about that. Bedroom furniture, up 1.5%. Outdoor equipment and supplies for all your preppers, 5.1%. Women's suits, 2.4%. Car parts, up 1.4%. Gardening and lawn care services, up 1.1%. Legal services, up almost 2%. Postage and delivery services, up almost 5%. When you start to add that up, those little things that aren't food, energy, et cetera, et cetera, you start to see that it's more than just a 3% jump or a 4% jump. It's a jump that's eating more and more of your paycheck, and you feel that every single day. You do. You do. And what you need is government. I'm looking at both sides, addressing it. Not being the, you know, Republicans going, oh, let's let them chew on this one for a while. They made this bed. Let's let them lie in it. Right? They're floundering in it. No. This is where you come up and you say, what do we got to do to do something here? What do we got to do to push this thing forward? What do we have to do to help out? This isn't let the other side flounder because you want to win. Yes, it is, Chad, because it's all about winning. Because our ideas are better. Then beat them with your ideas. But once you get in there, it should be about what? Doing what's best. Yesterday, I got mad here. We had a... Uh, uh, we've got a guy named Paul Gosar who is who's one of our Congress people. He's an idiot, and that's I, I, I think being kind. Uh, never been a fan of his. He's in a super red district, and he he bends over backwards to 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 be you know everything uh, that Trump and his people would love and so he put out a tweet the anime style video was immediately criticized by democrats and some republicans and flagged by twitter for violating the company's rules regarding hateful conduct yeah because it was an anime like thing where he su supposedly kills AOC but she's supposed to be like one of these titan things and it's really about taking the steam out of her and he takes a swipe with a sword at somebody who's president Biden and my thought process the entire time is what are you doing for your constituents you're trying to be a celebrity but what are you doing for your constituents you're trying to win favor with people that aren't in your district so you can somehow have people cheer you on. But what are you doing as a person who's been put in charge to go handle business? That's who we elect. And this is why we have the issues we have, because we continue to put the same Muppets in place over and over again. Both sides do it. Both sides do. And you can't call out your side because if you call out your side, oh, my God, people are going to come for you. I never understood that. Well, yeah, you can't call out your side. I'm like, why don't you? Why don't you call out your side if you think that they've done something stupid, that they've stepped over? That was the thing was one of the most disturbing things is, Few Republicans, but if I'm Kevin McCarthy, well, you know, I'm like, dude, what the hell are you doing? You're a grown ass man. I know you might think this is funny, but 
it, we got stuff going on. We, people are hurting. You know, what are you doing? You're, 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 you're tw- retweeting somebody that somebody sent to you because you think it's really funny, and somehow you're going to score favor with people who don't for you, don't vote for you. Or it's the same thing that goes on all sides. Now that's what we have celebrities for. They're more interested in likes, tweets, and being on Fox or MSNBC than they are about actually doing the job at hand. There's only so much they're going to be able to do, but at the same time, people want to know you're with them. You send people there, and they're more interested in their Q score. Right? What's my Q score? Oh, your favorite. Right now, amongst uh, Latino men, you're up big, and amongst you know urban, uh, you know suburban white women, you're up really big, and oh, that's great. Amongst people who aren't in your district, yeah, you're you're scoring well. Dumbass. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Love hearing from every single one of you. And I know I'll get pushed back. I'm good with that. I like that. I love the pushback. You know, right now, uh, we were were talking earlier, because Matthew McConaughey is getting closer and closer, I think, to throwing his hat in the ring. And as far as running for governor, says he wants to run as a centrist, you know, which has become a bad word because you don't choose a side. Uh, it's not even about that. He's, he's choose, he, His side is, what's the issue? That's the way I always tell everybody when it comes to me. Like, what's the issue? Well, what do you mean? Well, like, okay, so w- what's 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 the issue here we're talking about? Well, we're talking about, uh, well, you should, aren't you all conservative for everything? Well, I wonder what the issue is. I'm a free-thinking individual. If you tell me what an issue is, I'll give you my opinion on it. If you want me to give you the same opinion based on some bizarre ideology that isn't even based on reality anymore of what a party stands for because it's been twisted, then no, I'm not giving you that because that's insane. I'll tell you my issues. I'll tell you my opinions. You give me the issue. Tell me what you're concerned about. And I think... That's the thing. When you look at, like, Matthew McConaughey is a perfect example. But for us, we've talked about it. We're the exhausted majority, right? The alt-middle. I'll take hard stances on things, but I'm not going to just choose a singular side and say, that's the only thing right there. Because you're not interested at that point in time. You're following an ideology. You're not following reality. 323-538-2423. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us. I'd like to see how he does. I would. I'd like to see how Matthew McConaughey does because I think there's more people out there that think like us than there is out there who choose the extremes and live in those fringes. The difference is, for whatever reason, we've allowed the fringes on the left and the right to dominate conversations. To have the big, We're like, oh, give them the biggest bully pulpit. And that's where we need to take it back. And you've got to be willing to push back. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show. Tweet, text, Rough Greens makes any pet food better. Saw my dog Doodle last night. And I tell you what, I, you guys hear me talk about him. He's old. And I, I just, I, I love the cat, even though he's a dog. I don't know what I'd do without him. I, I don't. Uh, he's just he's cantankerous and he's mean and he's uh, at times you know because he's old and 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 when we got him he's just but man the fact that he's still here is amazing it's canine vitasmart from rough greens it's a supplement i put on top of his food it's got vitamins minerals probiotics all this incredible stuff and it has helped him in ways that it, it's truly incredible that's why we started our puppies on it because we want them to be healthy and happy and and get off to the right start and, you know, I joke, but Doodle's living his best little life right now, and it is great. Right now, they want to send you a bag of Rough Greens for free. All right, so they're not asking you to pay anything except for cover the cost of shipping. RUFFgreens.com slash Chad. You go there. They send you a bag for free. It's that simple. Roughgreens.com slash Chad. Or call 833-MY-DOG-77. 833-MY-DOG-77. Rough Greens makes any pet food better. Chad Benson Show.
Being antisocial sucks. Hang with Chad's friends on Facebook, The Chad Benson Show. And if you just need some alone time, head on over to Twitter at Chad Benson Show. Either way, we can't wait to meet the real you. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition. Lift off. Now it's time to find out what's trending. What's trending? Yeah, what does that mean? I mean something, right? Like it's trending on the old internet. What's trending? Let us take a peek and find out what's trending. Shall we? I think we shall. We've had a Gavin Newsom sighting. We'll touch on that in a little bit, but he is alive and well. Thank goodness. Yep, he is alive and well. And apparently he missed the climate change stuff of which he pushes in California and everywhere else. And he missed all of that stuff because there was a, he, some sort of intervention thing with his kids and they took him trick-or-treating and he couldn't even be there on the Zoom call. And oh, by the way, he went to Ivy Getty's wedding, the oil heiress. So, so there's that. <laughs> oh, Chad. Yep. Brian Williams leaving MSNBC and NBC News after almost 30 years. Yeah, he is. He's leaving. We'll miss you, Brian. Dean Stockwell. Fun actor. A lot of people stir. Oh, my God. He played in that. He played in this quantum leap, the whole nine yards. Passed away at 85. Paul Rudd is people's 2001 sexiest man alive. Also trending on Google, head over to Twitter, where people are fighting and arguing over mm, stuff, including a woman becoming the first patient to be diagnosed with climate change. I'm going to go back to you're insane. So how are you? So you have climate. And, and this was not a mental health doctor. This was actually a medical doctor who diagnosed a woman with climate change. Shailene Woodley and Aaron Rodgers have made new statements about their vaccine comments. What are they? You guys don't want to take them. You're healthy. Get over it. People are mad at you. I'm never going to watch your movie again. Okay. I don't like you. Whatever. That's what goes on there. COVID trending as well. Vaccine for children. That's not really a vaccine, but you get what are going with that. That's also trending. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar trending because I'm sure he said something about Aaron Rodgers. He does not have the right to endanger other people around him. How's he endangering other people around? Him? Let, let me ask you, in, in all fairness, how is he? Und- well, if you're vaccinated and he's not, because people have been asking me this last couple of days, how would you feel if your coworker wasn't vaccinated? I'm like, I don't care. Well, why don't you care? You should care. Why should I care? Tell me why I should care. Because either I don't have the vaccine and I'm okay with it, or I do have the vaccine, and if it's as good as you're telling me it is, then why should I worry? But they, but you could be living with somebody who's immune, you know, compromised immunity and, and, and may have comorbidities and stuff. It's possible. Yeah. But if I go 500 places in a day, how would I know if somebody got sick over here or over there? Why should I worry? Explain that to me in simple terms why I should worry. I, I don't get it. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet, text, love hearing from you. Some wokeness coming up. Woke Wednesday. Chad Benson Show. Chad Benson Show.
independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. It's Woke Wednesday when we like to listen to people who are insane say even more crazy things than you think any human being could say. No. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That happens all the time, kids. I'm here to tell you it happens uh, in so many ways. You have no idea how crazy some people are. Case in point, this lady, I'm going to go with she's a liberal. If you're a white woman that claims you support Black Lives Matter, LGBTQ+, any progressive ideals, concepts, beliefs, you cannot in the same breath also be in a relationship with a man that is conservative. When you do that, you are choosing to actively still lay in bed with white supremacy and still protect your white comfort. You cannot say that you care about these progressive ideals while still being in a relationship with someone that is actively oppressing those ideals and beliefs. <laughs> so wait, your 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 husband, your your boyfriend, whatever it is, you you can't be in a relationship with that person because, you know, white supremacy because that's what they do. They're there's they're crushing the souls of all those people. <laughs> can't make it up, kids. You can't. That's the insanity of which we live. I, and every time I hear something like that, I say, this is why Trump. This this right here, this is why Trump. This right here is why Trump. When you hear stuff like this. To your face, Ty. Makeup. You put makeup on it? Mm-hmm. How old are you? Seven. You're four. No, it's seven. Are you a boy or a girl? A girl. A girl? Mm-hmm. Were you born a girl? Yes. When you were a baby, were you a girl? Yes. Are you in a boy's body, though? Mm, yes. Yeah. <sighs> okay, tell TikTok bye. Bye. That's child abuse. I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> Sorry. And by the way, if he's seven, why can't... If, if he can be a girl, why can't he be seven? Right? Where's the logic there? You don't think people behind closed doors, when you see, you know, moms and dads split up and it's like, you know, and, you know, little kid lives with you, Ty, dad, he, he, he's regular, but when he goes home, mom kind of is like, oh, are you sure you don't want to play with the dress? Are you sure? Come on. Insane. That's what you have. How about this, kids? More from Woke Wednesday. My second grade boys are officially obsessed with nail polish. So I let them know about the nail polish that Olive and June sent me. And they were like, Mr. Morris, you have to bring us some. And I was like, oh, my goodness. I did not expect this. And then a day later, I had another scholar come in and he was like, I have glitter nail polish at home, but I couldn't wear it to school. And then the next day he came in and he was like, turns out the glitter nail polish is really hard to get off. So look at my nails. And I was like, wow. Mm -hmm. None of my kids can read, but what? <laughs> can't make it up, people. Can't make it up. You can't. The insanity of it all. Everything's race, everything's gender, and this is what happens when you have very little responsibility and you can fight these battles that don't need to be fought, but people go out there and fight them. What do you mean they don't need to be fought? Because, <laughs> as I go back and say over and over again, we're in the best time in the history of times, in the best country in the history ever, in the most diverse nation in the history of the world, the most accepting. There, there are people out there. By the way, there are people out there all over the world, regardless of color, who don't accept certain things. It's a very minute thing. Very minute. But when you sit here and you listen to stuff like that, you just shake your head. Never in a million years. Like if my, my, I, look, and I'm the most open-minded I love it. Live your life. <laughs> Do your thing. Be you, boo. But if my son came home and he's like, man, my math teacher says the best eyeliner to wear is da-da-da-da-da. And I'm like, mm, did you learn anything about math? 
Well, no, because we were too busy talking about glitter nail polish. <laughs> well, then you're, that's not your math teacher, all right? That's your fashion designer. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. <sighs> Matthew McConaughey, thinking about running, thinking about running. Very interesting. Said this, because I think he is going to run for governor. The more I listen, the more I believe he's going to be running for governor. But he's talking about kids, vaccines. He just said we can vaccinate kids. Do, 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 do we need to trust? Do I want to trust in the science, do I think that there's any kind of scam or conspiracy theory? Hell no, I don't. Right now, I'm not vaccinated. Mine, I'll tell you that. I'm not vaccinated. Mine, I want to get some more. I've been vaccinated. My wife has been vaccinated. We have a high-risk person in our household, my mother, who's 90, and she's immune compromised. I, I couldn't mandate having to vaccinate the younger kids. I still want to find out. I still want to find out more information. Still want to find out more information. Nothing wrong with that, right? There isn't. There's zero things wrong with that, but not in today's world. You know, uh, I I tweeted something out and then, you know, people fire back about, you know, the the virtue signalers are out there like, you know, joking about uh, Joe Rogan, where the media comes and attacks Joe Rogan because, by the way, he took ivermectin, but he took monoclonal antibodies and a bunch of other stuff, remdesivir, tried all this stuff, and he got over this stuff fast. Aaron Rodgers did the same thing. And, but everybody went after Joe Rogan again, who, why would you listen to him? He's a shock jock, and he's an idiot, and he's not a scientist. And at the same time, they're interviewing Big Bird, and they have some sort of excuse why they're interviewing Big Bird, uh, you know, over, oh, well, Big Bird's going to tell us all the wonders about uh, uh, vaccines and stuff. And, but they pick out, well, he took ivermectin. Okay, he took ivermectin. It's not, it shouldn't be used. It's a horse dewormer. It's used on horses, and not the same that's used on people. They use other things to deworm the horse along with that. There are plenty of studies out there that say, you know, I mean, there there are studies out there that talk about not used to prevent, but used as a treatment. Are there better things? Monoclonal antibodies. Absolutely. Is one of them. 100%. Poorer nations are going to use ivermectin. Well, why is that? Because... There's no patent to it. It's generic. Who makes money? Nobody. Doesn't cost anything. There's an abundance of it. You can go out today and get it. Anywhere in the world, super cheap. Anybody could produce it. You've got the the formula for it as far as producing it and you're a pharmacy you, you, you know you're a pharma company and you want to produce a bunch of it you can but there's no money in it pharma one of my friends she is a scientist in the world of big pharma her job used to be doing what they do investigating peer to peer review going out, trying things, see what's happening, working on stuff for all kinds of drugs. But then she moved to another portion of it, which is, hey, our patent's almost up with this thing. Let's find out what we can get this patent for so we can keep the patent. What do you mean? Well, we don't want to let everybody have it because after a while the patent expires and then everybody can produce it and that's why you have a generic drug and it costs x amount of dollars comparatively to something else so so the patent is is expired it's not good to us but the thing over here right this thing over here that we used it for well we can also use it on adhd Oh, yeah, it, it has it has some benefits for people with ADHD. And because of that, let's rename it. We'll plop it over here. And now we've got a patent for that. If this is the deadliest thing in the history of things that could destroy and kill everybody, that we have to shut down everything, why isn't it? that governments didn't just force the companies who came up with these to produce enough for everybody and give it away. 
Well, we wouldn't do that. No, we wouldn't. But Pfizer, Moderna, BioNTech, we're not ready to share our stuff. We're not ready. We're not ready to do it. If ivermectin, and they've got studies to say, again, it's it's the biggest study that's out there. I mean, you can go look at everything. Uh, the biggest study that's out there on this, and there there is a ton of studies, uh, is uh, 109 studies. And you can go through it. It says 65 ivermectin COVID controlled studies, 31 RCT studies, and a few other ones. 67 proven for early treatment of this. But there's no money to be made there. That's a treatment where nobody gets paid. Chris Rock said it better than anybody. There is no money in a cure. There's money in the disease. By the way, the big pharma companies, who everybody wants to trust and they're all great, have printed several billionaires through this, which I got zero problems with. They're lobbying monies through the roof, and this is also the same industry that told everybody, don't worry about Oxycontin. It's going to be fine. Nothing addictive. And the same people that are telling you it's super safe and everything's cool, I do believe that. I don't think it's screw around. Are the same people that kind of wandered through, not really going, could Oxycontin really be an issue? 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. Oh, kids, my, 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 my pillow. Mike Lindell, the inventor and CEO of MyPillow, wants to give back to my listeners. You can get great discounts on all MyPillow products if you go to MyPillow.com right now and click on the radio listener special. Get deep discounts on MyPillow mattress toppers, towels, and so much more. They have slippers, dog beds, and even high-quality weighted blankets. For example, Mike is offering buy one, get one free offer on Giza Dream Sheets. All MyPillow products come with a 60-day money-back guarantee and a 10-year warranty. My favorite product of all the MyPillow stuff, and I love them all and I've got them all, is the mattress topper. It is second to none. You will not be disappointed, and you will sleep like you're sleeping on a cloud. All MyPillow products are made 100% in the USA. Go to MyPillow.com. Click on the radio listener special for the buy one, get one free offer on the Giza Dream Sheets. Enter promo code Benson or call 800-983-4975 for great MyPillow specials. That's 800-983-4975. Be sure to use promo code Benson at checkout. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show. your Twitter tweet, text, love hearing from me at Chad Benson Show. No snowflake zone. Uninformed opinions are in danger of melting. The Chad Benson Show. Everything you need to know about where we are in our world is the fact that there is a Big Bird for Senate Twitter page with 72,000 followers. Gosh, I can't believe I'm going to be Senate. I'm going to run against Ted Cruz. Yeah, 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 yeah. Gosh, that's going to be great. Hey, let's be real. Could he do a better job? Maybe. I don't know. Wouldn't it be great if they were all Muppets and puppets? I've been saying for years they should just get actors to play him because that's all you're really doing is acting. So that way we get this fiery speeches, but in a way of a very thespian way. Hello, everyone. I think it'd be better with puppets. I think that would be like, oh, I like this. This is fun. This, this is good. Tell me more, Mr. Puppet. Tell me more. Tell me how bad he is. He's bad. He's a bad guy. Ted's a bad guy. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Wouldn't it be great if the guy who was playing Big Bird would have gone on? They're like, Big Bird. Tell us about your experience. Guys, I'm not Big Bird. My name is Ron. Uh, I got the shot and I turned into this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not getting a shot, Bobby. I don't want the shot. Please, Bobby, I don't want the shot. 
Oh, that would have been fun. Paul Rudd is the sexiest man alive. Hi, I'm Paul Rudd, and you're behind the scenes at my People magazine. <laughs> sexiest man alive? Alive. Photo shoot. I learned about this via email. I got an email, which I had to read twice because it was so insane and out of left field. And once it registered what it really was, uh, the first thing that I thought of, get ready for outrage. What? Yeah. Of course there's going to be outrage. How can he be the sexiest man alive? He's Paul Rudd. Well, first of all, he's funny. That's a winner. People always ask, why does uh, uh, Pete Davidson get all the ladies? Funny. Funny dude. Funny gets ladies. I talked to Patton Oswald one time. Because, so, you know, he married, uh, uh, for a lot of guys my age, like one of the, after his wife unfortunately passed, he married, uh, you know, one of the, preeminent young teen stars that had grown up and she was still stunning and stuff. And Pat Oswald, well, he's Pat Oswald. But he's like, that's funny. Yeah, that that's one of the reasons about it. And here's the perfect example. Rudd doesn't take himself serious. Oh, every single person I know is going to give me so much grief, as they should. I would. I mean, I'm going to lean into it hard. I'm going to own this. I'm not going to try and, you know, just oh, be so self-modest. I'm getting business cards made. I would totally do that. What if do they do you think you get an email if you were like twelfth? Do they call you and go, look, we decided to go with somebody else. We really appreciate you. <laughs> I mean, we do. We appreciate you wanting to be a part of this. And you're like, I didn't even know I was a part of anything. By the way, I was not voted sexiest man of anything. But that would be nice. I would love it if you got cards. That's the kind of guy that would get cards and hand them out to people. That's the kind of guy that would totally do that. Speaking of cards, this person needs a card to give out. I'm profit or Lee, whether whichever you know me as. It's, I'm fine with both. My pronouns are they, them, and Zier. Zier pronouns are Z, Zier, Zers, and Zerself. So they're used a lot like he, him, himself pronoun. For like sentence examples, it would be like, oh, Z is over there. Do you want me to go get Zer? Um, oh, that book is Zer, Zers. Z must be so proud of Zerself. <laughs> You're making crap up. That doesn't exist. That's the stuff where at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. It's Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Inflation nation. That's exactly what we have going on. Inflation nation. Best way to describe it. Inflation up. Prices up. Supply chain issues. Let's go live to the White House right now and hear what they have to say about it. Oh, maybe we must have missed him. Inflation up. It's the economy, stupid. This isn't going anywhere. They keep moving the goalposts with this. Well, it's going to be, don't worry about inflation. It's just temporary. Well, everything's temporary. You and I are temporary. In life. But we live in the now. And it feels like 
the things you're telling us with inflation have been wrong. <laughs> From it's temporary to don't worry about it. By summer, it's going to be gone. Don't worry about it. Third quarter, maybe early fourth. Janet Yellen, maybe by next year. I wouldn't foresee it lasting that much longer. What, what, what? Consumer price index. Up. Inflation nation. A 0.4% increase in September, a 0.9% surge in the consumer price index last month. And over the last 12 months, the CPI has soared more than 6%. Nearly every sector from food to energy to new and used cars was affected by the increase. Just in time for holiday travel, gas prices are up 6%. Among the few bright spots, airfares and alcohol are slightly cheaper than they were a year ago. Which is a perfect thing, because nobody loves getting drunk and flying around in a time when you have to wear a mask and everybody's on edge. People are frustrated. But you know what they want? They want to know you're with them. That's it. They want to know you're with them. That's, that, that, that's what they want are you in this with us don't expect miracles i don't care who you think the president is and off oh, under trump we would have never had this go look at the energy prices they started to rise last year when trump was in office but they've absolutely exploded since then a little bit of a supply and demand issue opec doing what opec does because it's a cartel and cartels are able to do things uh, you know, they turn the spigot off, they, uh, they, and they increase the spigot. They do those things. Those things are, uh, that's, but there are things that you can do. First of all, by making a phone call. Not having one of your cronies do it. Not having the vice president do it. Senator, former Senator Granholm, who is now the energy secretary. No, not a, no, having you pick it up. Having the phone call from the president of the United States saying, what are you guys going to do to help a brother out? Little something. Sitting down with the people and addressing the issues, saying, will you feel your pain? We're going to use everything that we can in the federal government. And I'm urging the Republicans and Democratic governors across the country to use what tools they can and have available to help us bring down some of these costs right now. Even that, talk to the people. That's what they want. That's it. You know, like here in Arizona, my biggest problem from the, with the coronavirus stuff that was going on here, where everybody was mad at our governor, oh, he's, he's horrible, he does that and the other. My biggest issue is he, he wasn't engaged. He wasn't there. My biggest issue is he, 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 he didn't feel like he was participating in it. That's what people want. It should be simple. Doesn't have to be hard. You don't have to do anything big. You don't have to do anything crazy. People shouldn't expect miracles. But what they would like to see is effort. What they would like to see is you making an effort. That's what people would like to see. Silence talking about an agenda that doesn't affect everyday people's lives is not what people are looking for. Not at this moment. You keep doing what you think you need to do. This is what you're going to get. You're getting prices rising tremendously. You're getting people worried about what's coming this summer. I remind you, earlier this week, Jennifer Granholm, Energy Secretary, talking about gas. Bank of America is predicting crude oil prices could soar another 50% by next June. Could the average gas price in America be $4 a gallon in the United States soon? We certainly hope not. The president is all over this. Of course, every president is frustrated because they can't control the price of gasoline because it's a global market. Um, you know, OPEC uh, is unfortunately controlling the agenda with respect to oil prices. OPEC is a cartel and it, well, he can call upon them to increase supply and they have chosen this past week not to do that. Yeah. No, have you called him? Not you. Have you made that phone call? And there's a difference between, come on, we all know, there's a difference between a phone call and a call. 
right? Hey, guys, can you do something to help us out? No, sorry, we can't do that. Okay. And hey, guys, I don't want to release any of our strategic petroleum. I could. I don't want to undercut you guys. I don't want to do any of that stuff. What I'd like to do is us to come to agreement. I'm not saying that you guys don't earn money. Knock yourself out. And I get you got something going on with the with Russia and all that stuff. Fantastic. I'm not saying that you turn the spigot on to the point where you lose money. None of that. What I am saying is, how about a little something, something for help? Right? We kind of did look the other way <laughs> when you went and killed a journalist. We have an uneasy relationship, and I don't want to make it any more awkward. So how about we come up with something, something, where we're all kind of feeling like, okay, you're getting a little something, we're getting a little bit of relief. How about that? Is a difference between, hey, guys, could you do something for me? They said no. And another phone call. And you know what that is. Because you'd know going into it, if I am going to make this commitment, I'm going to have to figure out what I'm going to have to do. How about this? What about this one? Hey, America, we're going to knock the gas tax till February 1st. We believe that we need to give you guys relief in this time. So we're going to cut the gas tax till February 1st. Little things that go a long way. Let people know you're trying and that you're there. You'd be surprised when you engage. Last week, whether people like Youngkin and the, you know, or, or not, they just felt like they had to vote for him comparatively to, to McAuliffe. The reality is the one thing he did is he engaged and he listened. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text a program. Love hearing from all of you. I do. You can tweet at us all the time. So he's on Twitter. We were talking about... Uh, Big Bird and this, all of this craziness. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about that. Because it's funny to see how people engage and what the narratives are always about when it comes to, to certain things. And I'm not saying I'm right, but I'm saying every once in a while, when you take certain things as just strictly face value and you don't ask yourself other questions about, well, maybe there's more to the story... I think you're shortchanging yourself. I really do. We're going to talk about that. Not so much about Big Bird, but just about COVID in general. 323-538-2423. Rough Greens makes any pet food better. Absolutely amazing. Give it to my dogs every single day. It has helped my dogs in ways that I don't think people really, really understand. It, it, it really has, including my older dog who's got bad hips, arthritic hips, really bad. And... Uh, Fatty tumors in his hips to the point where you couldn't touch him, couldn't pick him up. He wanted to get on the couch, but you couldn't touch him. And he was he was mean. He was cantankerous. I started giving him rough greens beginning of last year and almost two years into this. He's healthier. He's happier. He's shinier. His coat is amazing. All because of the little change, which was rough greens. Sprinkle it on top of your dog's food. You watch what happens right now. Try it before you buy it. Vitamins, minerals, probiotics, mega three, six, nines. You watch the things that happen. Don't change anything other than this. And it's a free bag. RUFFgreens.com slash chat. Roughgreens.com slash chat. You go there, get a bag for free, cover the cost of shipping. That's all they ask. Nothing else. Or call 833-MY-DOG-77. 833-MY-DOG-77. Rough Greens makes any pet food better. Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show, where we reach across the aisle and occasionally poke someone in the eye. Boing! Coming up, Miles Taylor's going to join us in a little bit. He has a very interesting article out uh, at the Desert Times. It's uh, very interesting. We'll link it. But he was anonymous. 
he was inside the Bush uh, administration as well as Trump, and uh, he he was anonymous. Uh, but he wants to talk about uh, in his new article, you know, kind of the the battle of what's happening right now and when it comes to the parties. And so uh, it's gonna be interesting to talk to him. We're gonna talk to him hopefully here in in just a little bit. I tweeted out earlier. You can follow me at Chad Benson Show on both Twitter and and Getter and everything. And and uh, the joke about like. Aaron Rodgers goes, he gets himself, you know, he gets sick and he lies to people, but he misled and, you know, we're, we're, we're playing the word game here. But he talked about, oh, you know, Joe Rogan's my pal now, right? Like, is that, which I think is hilarious that, that he talked about that. I consulted with a now good friend of mine, Joe Rogan, after he got COVID. And I've been doing a lot of the stuff that he recommended in his podcasts and, you know, on the phone to me, I've been taking monoclonal antibodies, ivermectin, zinc, vitamin C and D, HCQ, and I feel pretty incredible. Yeah. You know, so I, I I joked because somebody tweeted out something funny. It's funny how Joe Rogan is dismissed, you know, because he's not a scientist. And they'll do a full interview with Big Bird and Elmo about things. And, of course, some people are like, wow, Chad, because Joe Rogan's a shock jock and da 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 I said... You guys pick out the ivermectin, right, in what he said. But he's monoclonal antibodies. Tim Pool, another guy who I like to watch, uh, he he's like, ivermectin didn't do anything for me, but I took monoclonal antibodies and I'm fine. You know. Well, is there any studies about it? Blah, blah, blah. But it's funny, the reaction, because it was the same thing when, like, the hydrochloroquine thing was going on. Where a group of people, and we've talked about the Vaxenfreud, right? You know, Schadenfreud, you want to see some, you enjoy, you get pleasure from watching somebody else's misery. And the Vaxenfreud is, is, is one of the things they talked about, where people who, who are vaccinated take pleasure over people who aren't vaccinated that get sick. But the hydrochloroquine was a perfect example of people wanted it to fail because of Donald Trump. Because they didn't want to be right. It's the same way that Donald Trump is is pissed off at the 13 Republicans for giving Joe Biden a win for the the infrastructure bill. That's not the way you look at it. We who doesn't think our roads suck? Who doesn't go to an airport and go, wow, this thing's awful. Who doesn't hear stories every day about our power grids? In, in desperate need of repair. But it is, it is, it's interesting because that's where we are. It's like we want the other team to fail. That's like wanting your pilot, who you don't agree with, to crash the plane so you can tell everybody, ha ha, I was right. That's the dumbest thing in the world. We pick and choose. By the way, go to DuckDuckGo or... Or, you know, and or any of these other things, not Google, but you go to them and you type in stuff and you find, well, this this study's not on Google or it's buried somewhere. And you go and look and there's ton, tons of studies about ivermectin. You know, some of them are inconclusive. Some of them are OK. And again, it's not about it's a treatment. It's not about a prevention, which is what the shot is, which I'm still a big fan of the shot. I got no no quarrels with the shot. Go get the shot. Zero issues with getting the shot. My issue is when you talk about any of these other things, you want the other side to fail rather than go, God, that would be great, right? Like, wouldn't it be great if, like, oh, what if ivermectin that costs virtually nothing actually was pretty good at treating it should you get sick? Why is that a bad thing? Well, it's not a proven treatment. By who? Well, the FDA and the CDC. Again. And they don't want it to be a proven treatment because, well, Big Pharma doesn't want it to be a proven treatment because there's no money in it. There's no money in it. And it's widely available. Let me ask you this. If today you came up with an engine that could be powered on, I don't know, Rotten leaves and water. Do you think the energy department 
would be stoked? Well, probably. Are you sure? Do you think the fossil fuel companies would be excited? Well, I don't know. Maybe. I don't, I don't know. Maybe. No. No, they wouldn't. It's how they make their money. So just remember, it doesn't hurt to ask questions. It doesn't hurt to expand your mind. It doesn't hurt to ask, am I wrong or am I right about this? It doesn't hurt to listen to other sides and say, you know what, before I close my mind, because I only want to believe one side of something and I only believe whatever, you know, the FDA and the CDC are telling me, you know, because of that. And they're they're flawless, right? Because they didn't, you know, have an issue with Oxycontin or some of these other things. They didn't ask certain questions. Remember Fen Fen from all those years ago, that weight loss stuff? Next thing you know, people are kidneys damaged and stuff, and they're pulling, you know, how about the FAA? They have any issues there? It's okay to ask questions and be cautious. And I'm not talking about the people who say, well, if you, you know, this, it's going to alter your DNA and you're going to, you know, turn into a lizard or whatever. I'm just saying it's okay to ask real questions. Miles Taylor should be joining us next. Discuss the soul of the Republican Party. Chad Benson, Chip. Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Interesting. He is, well, he was anonymous with that New York Times piece. He's got a new piece out. His name's Miles Taylor. He's head of the uh, Renew America movement, and it's in the Deseret News, and it is a very interesting read. It's it's just, it's smooth and easy. It's called Perspective, Inside the Fight for the GOP's Soul. Miles, thanks so much for joining us. Chad, thanks for having me. So, The soul of the – look, I think both party, Miles, are looking to find out exactly who they are. We have seen the infighting for the Republicans really kind of since Trump burst on the scene. Uh, The Democrats are starting to feel it now. But there is a fight amongst Republicans. Are they conservatives? Are they rhinos? Are they Trumpians? Uh, This battle is is nowhere near over. Yeah, You're absolutely right. And and look, I I like to – think of it in, in really three phases. And, and I lived these phases, uh, you know, really up close and personal. I was working in the House of Representatives when John Boehner was speaker and then Paul Ryan, and we saw the Tea Party emerge. And, and that was really uh, the beginning of this, um, this period of, of really inter-party civil, civil war. And, and that first period, I would call open hostilities. I mean, you had the Tea Party emerging, really fighting with sort of traditional Republicans, uh, and it was a big battle. But then the second phase of the GOP civil war, I really call uh, sort of the the detente and the pause in hostilities, because Donald Trump became president, and largely the dissenters were driven underground. Um, but we're now in a new phase. The third phase of the GOP civil war is what I would call rebellion. Is the uh, uh, you know it's not a majority of the party, a, a minority of the party is still resistant to Trumpism. Uh, and is fighting back. But I think what's significant about this, Chad, is it's gone from ideological spats to really it's become a physical uh, sort of uh, fight. You've got a lot of people who are being threatened, you know, in their homes, you know, polling workers who are being threatened, members of Congress who've had to get security details because the fight has gotten so personal at this point. So I think that's what we should worry about. Uh, And you're right. A similar thing is starting to emerge on the left. It's just not gotten as extreme as we see in the Republican Party. You know, people will say, why should we listen to you, Miles? You are anonymous. You were snitching on Trump. You don't like Trump. You're a hater of Trump. Uh, All of those things. Look, here's the way I look at Donald Trump. I can compartmentalize. Do I think he's a wonderful human being? A, I don't really know him. Uh, Maybe he is if you're if you're nice to him. Maybe he's not. But I can compartmentalize some of the good with the bad. At the end of the day, uh, a lot of it was personality based because he kind of governed at times as kind of more moderate in, in some ways than people would think. But it was always about the insanity around him. And people would say, you're just a hater, Miles. Well, 
I think it's an easy argument to make, and I, and I totally understand it. I mean, here's what I would say. Um, I'm a lifelong Republican. You know, I'm a, I'm a conservative. I'm for free minds, free markets, free people. Um, I went into the Trump administration because a lot of us wanted to make it work. It was clear that this man was untested. It was clear that he uh, wasn't ready to uh, be in a government position. And so a lot of the folks in the cabinet went in to try to stabilize things and, and try to get him ready uh, to govern. Um, We knew it was going to be tumultuous. I think what we saw, though, day in and day out behind the scenes was a little bit more disconcerting. Um, You know, when you go into a meeting with the president of the United States and it's about life and death um, and he can't stay focused and is literally on his phone, you know, sending off tweets, that's when you get worried. You got a commander in chief who's not paying attention when we're talking about American lives. That's the type of thing we started dealing with. Now, of course, that's why I came out against Trump. I have no regrets about that. In fact, it's not just me. I mean, Trump can call me a disgruntled employee. Donald Trump's own former chief of staff, White House communications director, national security advisor, secretary of state, secretary of homeland security. You can go down the list. Secretary of defense. These are people who all came out and said, yeah, actually, things are a lot scarier behind the scenes than the American people realize. So it's not just a couple of so-called snitches. I mean, it was the bulk of his first early first term, very senior members of the administration who were worried about the president's mental state as he was in the course of doing his job. Now, whether people agree with me politically or not, I don't care. They do need to know, though, that that was the reality and the closest people to Trump felt that way and were concerned. That still hangs over the party and those discussions still hang over the Republican Party to this day. So we've not moved yet past Trump. And I think you're right, though. Some people can compartmentalize. My last point would be the Glenn Youngkin race in Virginia shows that there are Republicans who can go win races and don't have to make it about Trump. And that's that's hopefully a bright point about how we can get the party to go from civil war uh, to unified again. Talking to Miles Taylor, uh, he's got a great uh, article out. He's uh, uh, just, you know, it's very fascinating. Right, you can check it out the Desert News. I'll put it on the old Twitter there. It's called Perspective Inside the Fight for the GOP Soul. You know, uh, w- when you read this, you know, you talk about those people. Governor Perry, Lindsey Graham, Mick Mulvaney, you can go down, Paul Ryan, down the list of people that when he came out were like, oh, sweet mamma jamma, this guy's bad news, I want no part of any of this, he's horrible. But then he, 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 he starts a movement and he becomes president. Now you've got to deal with him. And how many of them mm-hmm. went from disdain to almost worship? Yeah, it, I mean, it was a lot. It's pretty breathtaking. I mean, these are some of the same folks that – you know, working with on Capitol Hill behind the scenes had said, you know, this man is a threat to the fabric of our republic. We have to stop it. But then once he becomes president, they would still say those things. They still have the same concerns about Donald Trump. But a lot of them, I think, started off from a good position and said, look, it's our responsibility now. He's president. The American people have made this determination. We have to respect that, not subvert it. Um, Let's do the best we can to help him govern effectively and to help him govern as a conservative. And so I don't blame a number of those folks for changing their tune uh, at the beginning and trying to make the administration more successful. What I do have concerns about is that as time went on and it became clear that this was, this was not going to be a unifying uh, president and, and nor was there uh, the necessary stability that you would expect in the white house, then it's incumbent upon those people um, to call it out and, and try to contain Uh, some of the turbulence. Now, a number of those folks didn't do that and instead became uh, enablers rather than, you know, folks sounding the alarm. Um, That division has continued to, uh, you know, calcify these fractures in the GOP uh, to this day is is there's 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 really still this this pro Trump wing and this never Trump wing uh, that's much smaller. But um, I, I look, this is what I think it comes down to today. The reason people are afraid to break with Trump at the moment, those same people who behind the scenes say, we wish you would just go away. I mean, there are Republicans you see on TV who go say, you know, I support Trump and MAGA is the best. And behind the scenes will say to me and other folks, I wish you would just go away. But the reason they don't say that publicly is fear. They're afraid of losing their jobs. But what's gotten worse about the GOP civil war is they actually fear for their families back home. Now, you've heard Republican members of Congress now say this publicly, that some of them have voted in certain ways the past few years because they're worried if they vote a different way or seem like they're anti-Trump. People show up at their homes. Right? They get death threats. Again, they've had to hire security details. People have had to move their homes. Um, 
And I've seen that with close friends who worked at senior levels of the administration uh, is they've been very afraid to speak out publicly, uh, frankly, for fear of their lives. That's what's different about our politics at the moment. If any of us had gone and left the Bush administration and, and opposed George W. Bush, uh, you know, 20 years ago, uh, we would have been, you know, uh, met with scorn, but that would have been it. Uh, we wouldn't have been confronted in our homes. Now our politics have gotten a lot more visceral and, frankly, more violent, as we saw on January 6th and, and other episodes. So I think that's really the concern for us, and that's why this has become not just a political issue, but in a sense a public safety issue. Talking to Miles Taylor, uh, who is uh, Renew America Movement. You got that going on. You got a, uh, in the Desert News a very interesting article that uh, you, you paint a picture about, you know, the fighting for the soul of, of, of the party. And, you know, one of the things... Uh, I look at this, right? You talked about the extreme. The extremes on both sides have had way too much power given to them. Too many people are influenced. They want to be celebrities. They're more interested in likes and shares and tweets and insanity from the AOCs to the Paul Gosars of the world and, and, and all of them. They're not interested in actually doing it. 80% of us are the exhausted majority. Why is it we continue to give in to people like, you know, the, the, the celebrities and allow the influence of social media to really kind of govern in a way that it absolutely has no place governing. Well, you, look, you're absolutely right. You've hit the nail on the head. And, and at the risk of sounding hyperbolic, I think this is going to be the single most important issue in this country in the 21st century is how do we get democracy to work again? And if you look at the political marketplace, like any other marketplace, right, uh, you know, the marketplace for clothes or cars, um, you see there's a, a very high level of consumer dissatisfaction. When you go poll people right now, 62 percent of Americans say that they are deeply disappointed in the way that both of the big parties are operating. They're unhappy. And a historic number of Americans, 50 percent of Americans now say they are neither a Republican or a Democrat. Half the country says they are independents. That number has never been higher since Pew started doing those surveys. That's hugely significant. What that tells you is people are fed up with the two options that they have in the system. Now, Chad, you know this as well as me. In any other marketplace, you and I have infinite options. I can go get a ride share from any company I want. I can buy shirts from wherever I want, food from wherever I want. I have unlimited choice and competition in every other marketplace. But ironically, the place I don't have choice and competition is in my democracy. And that's because over decades, both of the political parties, this isn't just the GOP, it's not just my party that's the problem here, both of the political parties have slowly bended the rules in their favor in various red states and blue states. Those states have gotten redder, those states have gotten bluer, and it's made it really hard for other options to break in and challenge the system. So what we end up having is people who win really, really competitive primaries, more extreme candidates, end up uh, being guaranteed to win their general election. So there's not competition, there's not choice, and it's frustrating consumers. In other words, it's frustrating voters, they're angry, they want to see something different. Will we solve this in the short term? We won't, because those structural reforms take years, even decades. But there's really, really, I think, a lot of hope out there because there are efforts to reform the primary process, gerrymandering, things like ranked choice voting around the country that genuinely will allow more candidates from more different parts of the political spectrum to enter the fight and hopefully turn this thing around. I, I hope so. You know, I was telling everybody, I am a hardcore centrist, right? We call ourselves the alt-middle, whatever you want to call it, because I've got some <laughs> ideas that are a little bit on the left. I've got some ideas a little bit on the right. It depends on the issue. I'm not just a one, you know, I'm, I just take one issue and vote that way or one party and vote that way, because quite frankly, I always tell everybody, you can go look at what the Republicans have to say, and I love it, but not what they say, what's on paper, what the ideals were. When you look at both sides of the aisle, those aren't ideas those are corporations and their whole thing is protect your area at all cost you don't want to let them get in your area and vice versa and that's sad because at the end of the day nobody wins you've got renew america movement uh what exactly is that yeah well look we launched really to address the problem that you just highlighted i mean we're a group of uh you know we were started by the disaffected Republicans like myself. So our organization is run by former Republican senators, governors, congressmen, cabinet secretaries, uh, and people who've run the Republican Party, like Michael Steele, who was the former chairman 
of the RNC. So we came together earlier this year, launched for New America with one central goal. Let's restore a common sense coalition in Washington, D.C. We are sick of the partisan politics. We're sick of the extremism. We need to reinforce that pragmatic center, the, the alt middle, as you call it. And the way to do that is very, very simple. It's go after the bad guys and protect the good guys, right? That's what it comes down to. That's my elevator pitch. we got to go after the bad guys, get them out of our politics, and protect the good guys. And what do I mean by that? Well, you, you listed off some of the names. The Paul Gosars, the Marjorie Taylor Greens, the Matt Gaetzes of the world, these clowns who aren't really serious legislators, right? They're in it for social media fame uh, and then later to go make money and, uh, and make movies and that sort of thing. We've got to get them out of Congress. The only way to do that is not just to write op-eds and blabber on cable news. It's to go have electoral effects. What do I mean by electoral effects? Voting them out of office. So we launched this movement to announce who we think are the most divisive members of Congress, go to their districts, try to unseat them, but then more importantly, announce who we think are the renewers, the people who want a common sense coalition on the center right and the center left. So we've got uh, about a dozen Democrats that are really unifying, pragmatic, patriotic Democrats, um, and just under a dozen Republicans who we would put in that same category who've stood up to the party and put country over party. We want to protect them and their races. That's how this is done. You've got to protect those good guys and build that nucleus into a larger group of members of Congress who are rewarded for doing the right thing rather than punished and lose their races for standing up and doing the right thing. So that's what we're trying to do. And it's going to take a couple of election cycles to make it happen. And this is going to be a very hard fight this cycle. Some of those renewers are probably going to lose their seats. But that's what we're trying to do is to mobilize voters to protect the good guys and go after the bad ones. Miles Taylor, great article inside the fight for the GOP soul. It's at uh, Deseret.com. Appreciate you coming on. Check out the RenewAmericaMovement.com. Thanks so much uh, today and hope to have you on again. Thanks for having me, my friend. At Chad Benson Show, Twitter, C-H-A-D-B-E-N-S-O-N, Chad Benson Show. I can't take it anymore! Well, get over it. It's time to forge a new path with your very own political cartographer, Chad. That's an interesting interview. We'll uh, throw it up on all the uh, mabobbers there and check out the podcast as well with Miles Taylor. Uh, you know, some people disagree with him. Some people look at him and say, hey, you, you turned on Donald Trump, and, and, you know, we asked him that, and he had his rights and conviction. You weren't there. I wasn't there. I don't know what's going on behind. I talked to people besides him who behind it, uh, and they had, you know, kind of a lot of, 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 stories like what he was saying you know but so much of it was also blown out of proportion so much of it was the end of the day trump is still a a person to be reckoned with in politics not just the republican party in politics that's the reality of it And 2022 is going to be very interesting, not just Republican and Democrat, but also Democrat and progressive fighting each other and Republican Trumpism moderates. But we've talked about it for years. 80 percent of us don't really identify with either side of the aisle. And. We're, we're stuck, you know? It's like you, your choice is Coke or Pepsi. Well, what if I want a Sprite or RC? <laughs> well, what if, what if I don't want either of those? What if I just want water? Well, yeah, well, Coke owns that too. And Pepsi owns this. That's the frustration I think we all feel. It is. It is. Trump is a force to be reckoned with. Now, if... 2022 rolls around and he backs eight or 10 or 12 people big time and they end up getting blown out. Well, then there's going to be, you know, people step back and go, okay, fine. Maybe this isn't what it once was. But if he wins big, his people that he supports, then you know what? Understand that the Kingmaker isn't going anywhere anytime soon. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Get her. 
can go there as well. You guys have a wonderful day as usual. We start you off on a Monday. Then we go to that Tuesday, which everybody seems to hate. Then over that hump on the other side. And we got you over that hump. You have a good one. Night, night, Jack. This is the Chad Benson Show.